type of reaction that we'll be discussing now is called a double replacement reaction. In this reaction, you can think of it uh, as a uh, going to the dance, two couples going to a dance or something. You have A going to the dance with B as a couple, and they go to the dance, and C goes to the dance with D, they go as a couple. They get to the dance, and then all sorts of horrible things happen, and uh, they don't end up leaving the same way that they came. What you have is kind of a switching of partners. A came with B, but leaves with one of those guys. So A would leave with D, and C would leave with B. And you might wonder, well, why have I written it that way exactly? Why did I put A, D, you know, A, D, but why didn't I just put B, C? Why did I put the C before the B? Well, and the reason is because <coughs> in uh, these generally involve ionic compounds. And remember, in an ionic compound, the first part is positive and the second part is negative. And so that would mean in this one, you have the first part is positive, the second part is negative. So when they swap, you have to have opposites together. This, uh, the A is not going to go with the C from the other compound. It has to go with the D, which is why we get this, A and D. And again, the positive, just like in naming and writing formulas, comes first. So similarly, when the other product is made, you have the C has to go with the B, so it's a little switch of risky positive first and then negative. And so here we have an example, an example reaction, lead nitrate, those are our partners, lead starts out with nitrate and you uh, mix it with some potassium iodide. Well you're going to have a swapping of partners and so the lead is going to end up the first with the, it's almost like the foil method from algebra, the f uh, except that it's the outers and the inners go together. And so lead, the positive here, goes with the negative I there. And you need to know the charges. We can inspect that and determine that that lead is a plus two. So that would have to be PBI2 is one of the products. That's our new couple. And our other couple is potassium with nitrate. Max Lowe, if you're in the building, come to the office. Max Lowe, come to Max. the office. Job. And we weren't worrying about balancing, but that would be an example. And so I can show you this actual reaction right now. We can take some lead nitrate. And lead nitrate is a white crystal powder. Just uh, ionic compounds tend to look like that. I've dissolved some into this distilled water. It's not completely dissolved, but it's dissolved enough to make the reaction work. Here's some potassium iodide. And... I've dissolved it in some water. It's a lot more soluble than the lead nitrate, so it's uh, pretty well completely dissolved. And you can see that they're both uh, pretty well ooh, <coughs> uh, soluble. They're all dissolved. And make sure to get zoomed in oh, oh. close here. We're going to see what happens when we mix them. We're going to make some lead iodide and some potassium nitrate. And you'll see that's fairly obvious when it happens. You get it's actually all the yellow that you're seeing is the lead iodide. Lead iodide is a yellow solid. It doesn't dissolve in water, and so you get that nice canary yellow color. The potassium nitrate you won't see because it actually remains dissolved. It's soluble, just like the stuff we started with. And if we let that sit overnight, uh, tomorrow we could come in, we could see all that yellow powder has sunk to the bottom. And so that would be a double replacement reaction.